seven of fishing up north. Getting tired, but gonna see if we can end on a good note. So welcome again to the river. Let's see what we can make happen. It is pretty cold today. It's August, it should be 90, but instead it's like 55 and we got a cold north wind. Got some sleeves on, I've got the rain jacket I wanna throw on because I'm already chilly. But yesterday the fish were super fired up on the Mississippi, so I'm hoping the same is the case here today. I'm gonna start checking some slack water and then uh, throughout the day, you know, I think the fish are gonna move into some reduced flow areas. Uh, but for right now, we're gonna see if we can find them in the slack and get off to a good start. So come along, let's see what we can find. Shallow slack. Always a good place to start. So my buddy's up there fishing behind the dam in a lot of flow. And really, right now, this early in the morning, I, I find a lot more in shallow slack water like this. In the summertime, even though I know they're gonna move out into the current at some point, this tends to be the money spot for me to start the day. I thought it was a straight up 20 to start the day, but it's a good fish. Come on. Really want to mess this up. The roots of all roots right there. Can't even get a cast in at it. Oh, that was a big fish. Whoa, 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 big musky right there. Giant. This is a beautiful place. Oh my goodness. What was that? It was a... <laughs> Not big enough to allow in the boat, but better than a hammer handle. He smoked that. Oh, he came off. That was a good fish. This jerk shad was just like suspending in the water, doing nothing, and then whoo, just gone. He killed that. Little 17 or so. You kidding? Missed that again. He shot 
way out from the bank. He was up pretty shallow. shallow on these banks in the white jerk shed or as I call it the Jeff Little special even though he makes his own weighted hook this is one that I bought I didn't make it I got time for that so with the uh, center jerk shed usually what I do I don't work it exactly like a jerk bait I'll throw it out I'll give it a few pops but then I like to like burn it with the reel and then maybe give it a few shakes while I'm doing that and that gives it a nice swimming action and then when you kill it it just like drifts up one direction and then when you swim it really fast it kind of acts like a little swim bait but it's a little more erratic which i really like and the benefit of this is no treble hooks obviously so you can bring it through some pretty thick cover with no problem Missed it the first time, you got it the second time. All about the same size so far, other than that first chunky 17. Man, this is like the most misses and losses I've had the whole trip. Right off the bat. Something swirled on it out there, out in the middle. Got him. Oh, that's a giant. Giant in the middle. Oh my God, dude, that is giant. I cannot believe it. First cast, just in the middle, I'm like, hmm, above all these islands, you know, sometimes they like to roam out in the middle, some nice deep grass. Guys, that is a tank. Oh my gosh. What thing is heavy. We'll get out of this current. gonna be famous this thing might be 21 inches this might be my second 21 incher of this trip prior to this I'd never caught one over 21 in the Midwest does Pennsylvania count as the Midwest that's got to be like Appalachia no look at that meatball <laughs> what
<laughs> Look at that thing. That might be 22, no joke. That's a freaking 22 inch smallmouth. That's a mouth open 22. Unbelievable. Does this count as a big bait? <laughs> big bait, big fish? I don't know. I don't think it's that big. <laughs> Still got the big fish though. I, I had an idea of like, okay, there's a little bit of a change in the river here. We have islands. We have some deep grass out in the middle. The water's flowing over the top of it. You can see the surface disturbance. So like, why not throw out here? Usually there are some roamers that push up at the top of like either a rapid set or island set, especially if the water flows a little faster around them. Uh, and sometimes it also helps to just get lucky. Like you can have a good idea and get lucky. They're not mutually exclusive. So it's not like I grinded and knew exactly where that fish would be. Had a decent idea through and there was a good fish there and it ended up being a great fish. Um, some days you just have to be happy that you got a little bit lucky and I surely am. bad fish not a giant but I think that means there's some fish in this grass a bait like this is perfect for bringing it down through that stuff because it's not heavy enough to really get bogged down in it chances are the vast majority of the time they're down in it looking up they're not waiting for something to scurry by on the bottom so their attention is already up towards the sky above them and then you have a nice big piece of bait that floats over that's an easy grab for them. And depending on the thickness of the grass, there's probably even a little bit of a current break down low. Oh, that, oh are you kidding me? Oh, that was a giant. Oh my gosh. Did you hear Oh, God, another one. Another one smacked it. That one was pulling like upstream in my rod. It was just, uh, that drag was going. Three more shots of big ones. Lost one. Broke one off. One jumped out. Spit it. There's one. It's not a big one. Nope. Man, there's a fish. Got him that time. Huge. Not a bad one, though. Definitely not a bad one. Take me for a ride, baby. <sighs> Fat, though. 
not super long. Fat, but not super long. Heavy fish, probably an 18-ish. Four and a half feet seems to be this really magical depth here. Back there, it was about the same where I caught the big one and then had, had a nice one jump off. So they're definitely not like hanging out shallow by any means. I'm pretty sure they're hanging down by the bottom of the grass or, or beneath where it's folding over from the current. But like I said, usually a fish in that kind of position with grass, they're just looking straight up because what is going on beneath all of that? Probably not a whole lot. There's probably some rock. Uh, there could be some crayfish down there. Could be some bait in between like the kind of slower pockets where the grass breaks the current a little bit, but I think the fish for the most part are looking up. And it also changes from eelgrass to another type of grass that I don't really know, but one that has wider leaves on the top. So that grass change could be where they're hanging out as well. So the grass is really, really thick down here, pretty much choking up the whole river. The difference between here and up there is there were nice, well, there was a lot of space above the grass and then there were nice channels on either side, kind of where there was some rock. And then as it got shallow, the grass lessened and uh, there was more rock up towards the bank. It does not seem like that's the case here. We've got a lot of grass all throughout, maybe a little bit closer to that bank. Might be clear. Are you kidding me? <sighs> right over here where the grass ends, that was the perfect cast. Another good fish. Just another giant smallmouth, no big deal. No biggie. <laughs> I wonder if it was the one from this tree. A lot of times they'll relocate somewhere, not super far. They don't often go back to the exact same spot, especially if you got hooks in them, but like this was too good of a transition here from grass to a little more sparse grass with rock. Gotta be close to 20. I already know you're gonna splash me. Yep. Too good of a transition not to be a smallmouth hanging out around it. We got it all, we got shade, we got an increase in current. We've got a transition from grass to hard bottom. You know, I don't really ask you guys to do this a whole lot, um, but if you're liking what you're seeing and you have been, go ahead and click subscribe if you're not already. The channel's been growing recently, and as long as we can keep that growth going, I'm gonna be a happy guy and be able to continue making videos like this, but I'd really appreciate it if you did that. But either way, I'm gonna go fishing, so it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Always when there's juicy spots, that's when you have to get your hook, treble hooks with grass on them that doesn't want to come off. Always. It's like a rule. Oh, you have a juicy spot? Let me wrap my line around the rod. Oh, there's a juicy spot right there. I'm floating really fast. I have one second to make the cast. Nope. There's something on your hooks. You now, some rivers there are smallmouth that like are healthy, but they're not anything special. Um, they grow to a decent length, but they're not really that heavy. But this river here, these fish are just like so healthy and so fat. Okay, 
Got a little excited there. Got a little excited. Behind the rockfish, behind the rockfish? No, I don't think so. Not when I'm right on top of it. Love me a good behind the rockfish though. behind the rockfish. So a ton of shells in here. This bottom just changed completely to rock. We got a heron flying away. Yep, that's a behind the rockfish. Oh no, he came up. That was a giant. How many fish can I lose today? Yeah, my sunglasses really want to go in the water. Did you just see that? That was a tank. <sighs> Why did he jump out of the water again? Come on, if you're still up there, eat it, dude. Five feet deep behind that. Holy crap, that's why. And that is a absolutely giant rock. That's a huge rock. It looks so small from far away. The fish this size. It seems like they're normal here. He's had some really quality bites. And I've seen some big fish. Like, how many? Oh, that one. Are you kidding? Your best five here could literally go 105 inches. I was just, that was my last cast. I'm like, I'm throwing in the middle. There's gotta be some. <laughs> Same thing. You just gotta look away when you cast. Down, power pole, don't let me down. Meatball, goodness, freaking crazy. These fish are giant. These are, I mean, look how tall that thing is. That thing is so thick. Well, that's what happens when you put it in the right place. Even compared to the Wisconsin, those fish were built different, but these fish are built different, different. Where'd you come from, buddy? Oh 
my gosh. This place literally just got done catching a fat 19. Tall. And this is like another pushing 19. Be honest, after seven days of this, seven days in a row, I was pretty tired. You know, this is the last day. It's like you're kind of at the point, like, get this one out of the way and head home. Miss my wife. And, like, this turned out to be a freaking crazy, crazy day. And I don't know how much we have left. Um, I think we still have a pretty good amount of water to cover, to be honest. Uh, and so far it is shaping up to be, like, the best ending I could have ever asked for. Well guys, we're getting towards the end of the float here. That is an absolutely stacked 17 inch, three pounder, four pounder. This thing's so heavy. Felt like a tank fighting him. But anyway, we're getting towards the end of the float here. So this could be it for the day. And what a day it was. Just an absolutely good day of fishing, even though there were some hardships to be sure. Lots of fish short striking, lots of fish coming off. Lots of fish missing, jumping out of the water. Letting me see how big they were. Just like, that was an insane amount of quality fish. Like the fish in that river specifically are just built like no other. I was so impressed by the fishing there. That was just, just wild. And glad I could take you guys along with me. So if nothing else happens here, then that is gonna be it. And I will see you on the next river adventure.